the reason I have been focusing on this is because it's a company that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Uh, University of Michigan professor Eric Schwartz and I have written a case study called uh, Blue Apron Turning Around the Struggling Meal Kit Market Leader, uh, which delves into CLV very deeply uh, from the perspective of customer retention. And because we had talked about this case in my uh, previous video on retention rates, uh, this can be a nice kind of segue from retention into valuation. So again, this is the company's retention rate, the retention curve. And what it shows is in future months after customers have been acquired, what proportion of those customers are still with the firm. And what I showed in that previous video was if we assume that all customers share the same retention rate, we would estimate a retention rate of 82% for this firm. So every single month, customers are flipping a coin, 82% chance it comes up heads and they stay with the firm and they just kind of keep flipping that coin until it comes up tails. So if we use that in conjunction with estimates of the other key variables for a Blue Apron, what we would infer is that the CLV of a customer at Blue Apron is approximately $13.40. The way that we get this is by basically getting estimates of each of those pieces that I had discussed previously. They're spending about $100 to bring in a customer. Uh, that means that their CAC is 100, because that's what we see on the right-hand side of this equation. The margin while customers are alive breaks down into three main pieces. The order rate, which is how many orders customers place while they're alive, multiplied by the revenue per order, the, the dollar value associated with, with each order, multiplied by the contribution margin, which is basically the, the variable profit margin associated with that incremental dollar of revenues. So we kind of bring those pieces together, uh, again, incorporating the, the retention rate of 82% and using our best guess of Blue Apron's uh, monthly discount rate. That's what gets us to that $13.40 figure. But what we had showed was if we use one single retention rate, uh, for all of the customers that Blue Apron is acquiring, it really doesn't do a very good job of capturing the sort of variation that we see in this observed retention curve. But that we, when we move to two loyalty segments, one which has high loyalty, one which has low loyalty, uh, we fit the data very, very well. And so one of the questions was, what effect does that have on the CLVs that we obtain? And so that's what we show over here. Again, if we assume one segment, we infer a value of customers after they've been acquired of about 113 bucks. When we subtract off the $100 they're spending to acquire customers in the first place, that's what gets us to the $13 CLV. When we move to two segments, we see that there's a bunch of customers who are very unprofitable, and then there's some customers who are very profitable. And we kind of mix those two together, weighing each of those groups by the proportion of customers that fall within that group, we end up with uh, an average uh, value for customers after they've been acquired of on the order of $134, which when we subtract off that $100 CAC, brings us to about $34 of, of CLV. As we can see, that's almost triple the amount that we got under the one segment model. And this is something that we always see. So again, CLV, it's important to get the number right. Most people, they just use CLV as a talking point but it's really changing. We're really starting to see uh, a groundswell of interest and in actually using this in, in operations. And before we can, we really need to make sure that we're using the right model so that we can trust the conclusions. And as with my retention rate video, uh, hopefully this uh, continues to emphasize the importance of embracing the fact that your customers are different. Allow for different loyalty segments. Let the data tell you how good or bad uh, each of those segments are and how large they are. And what you're going to probably infer is that some are good, some are not so good. And when you bring it all together, uh, your customers are better than what you would have inferred uh, had you assumed that all customers were the same. Thank you very much. And hopefully this was helpful.